Hello there, my beautiful book lovers. My name is Kimia and welcome to my book nook. Today we're going to look at five nonfiction books that taught me valuable lessons about how to be happier, how to be a better person, improve at my job, how to pay attention to small details around me, and in general, just to improve. I generally read much more fiction compared to nonfiction, but I always try to read at least a bunch every other month or so, simply because after you graduate or finish school, you are not going to learn as much about other areas as you're going to be so focused in your little bubble and the field that you're working on. Because when you're in school, you have the chance to take different classes and like learn a little bit from like different fields, anything that you're interested in, anything that you might be interested in. But by the time that you graduate and start working, you're really in that bubble and you don't have the time, you do not have the opportunity to learn from other different fields or different things that one day you used to be interested in or you want to be really learn about. And because of that, I find nonfiction books the great resource there because you still can learn from different fields, anything that you're interested in and feel that you're still learning because it's very important to always seek the knowledge, really stay curious and just, just learn. And so I hope you find these five books as interesting and educational as I found them. So let's get into them. First, we have The 99% Invisible City by Roman Mars. This book, I started to list with this book because it's related to architecture and cities and cities design and everything related to that. And because architecture is the field that I study in, it just holds such a dear spot for me. This book mostly focus on the 99% invisible part of the cities because as human, we live in buildings, we work there, we eat, we sleep, we go to schools, hospitals, retail stores, anywhere that we go. And the city itself, even when we're on the streets, when we're walking and because of the, like the modern human being, we are spending most of our lives in or surrounded by buildings and because of that I find it very fascinating how little we pay attention to the details when it comes to our cities and our buildings and so this book it was so fascinating for me it actually is based on a podcast by the same name and I really talk about it. it's like short episode I have listened to a very few of the episodes of theirs but I enjoyed the book so much because it also has like such a beautiful illustration it's just like so gorgeous and it's like you know it's very minimalistic and simple but at the same time like it just like i mean look at that it's just so gorgeous and i know that like it's part of it because how much i love i mean oh my god look at this it's just like it's ugh, because i love architecture and i can gush about it all the time but I recommend this book to everyone because like, you know, again, it's not really focused in architecture. It's really about pay attention to your city, to your homeland. And like, you know, just like pick up on those little things, the details that like sometimes we might even because like, for example, for myself, sometimes I'm crossing a street and I see something and I'm like, oh, huh, that's funny. Like I have seen it around before, but I have no idea why they're what they mean and why we're doing it the same certain way. And so because of that, it's very interesting to read this and find out some of the like the details that are there that it's like specific to a city to a culture to a country or whatnot and so it can teach you a little bit and it's a like a very again basic fundamental sort of situation you don't need to have an architectural degree and that's the thing with all of these books none of them are really like you need to have the background knowledge to get into them but it's actually for the people do not that do not have that background knowledge and it's trying to teach them and it's just so fascinating, beautiful. It's a very fast read, at least for me it was, because like the chapters and parts are very short and you can get into them. And I love that it's in different sections, so it focuses on different things, every single um, section that it has and it breaks it down into different chapters. And so hopefully you will enjoy it as much as I did. Next, we have Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. This book is a fascinating one. This book it's about how to be a good leader, but not only and specifically when it comes to your job, but it can really apply to your family, your relationship, your friendships, and any part of your life really, because it's talking about who are good leaders and how it's not always about 
the power. While a lot of companies, uh, like the different power structure that we have seen around the world, sometimes applies that it's about to have the power to stick with it and like, you know, use your power to lead people into like any sort of situation that you're in or the company that you're in or anything of that sort. But it's actually more about your emotions. And it's about how you control your emotion, how you can control and connect others' emotion and control not by manipulating, but it's it's by listening, understanding, and seeing what's the problem and how you can control that situation that you're all in. And that's how you become a good leader. I very much enjoyed this book because I actually listened to the audiobook. That's another thing. A lot of the, I, I have mentioned it before many, many times that sometimes when I see the audiobooks is read by the author itself, I love that because it just like gives you that like little extra edge to the book. And when I was listening to it, I very much enjoyed it because to me, it felt like a TED talk that I was attending and was really talking about because she had done so much research throughout her entire career. And she was really talking about how while interviewing all of these like big names and like, you know, CFOs, CEOs, how they are trying to be good leaders, how they have been successful, how they have not been successful, how they can apply it to like how, um, people or leaders of small businesses, how they have been controlling their teams. And it's like really coming down that how important it is when you are a leader to really listen, but also to connect because like it sometimes can be easy to sit and listen, but if you're not able to have that empathy and really connect, then you're, it's that listening. It's not going to be really useful because like, you're not going to understand how to fix the issue or how to improve it, how to work with it. And so I found this book interesting because for me, and especially as a person that just starting my career journey, it's really interesting to see it because like, sure, at the moment right now, I'm not really looking after anybody else and I'm the person at the bottom, but it's good to know from the beginning. So by the time that you're given more and more responsibilities, you can know how to control it, how to take care of it, how to take care of others, because that's the thing with jobs, honestly, because I, again, I said that like this can apply to all of the aspects of your life but like for right now to focus on your career when it comes to jobs your talents and your skills are very important but your relationship with people that you work with it's much much more important and you can ask that from anybody that you know or you trust and they will say the same thing because sometimes you can be the most talented person ever but if you have I don't know, if you're rude, if you do not know how to connect with people, if you make them feel awkward or weird around you, you're not gonna get that promotion. But the person that might not be as talented as you, but it's actually a people person, that person, 100%, it's going to get the promotion. And like, I'm not going to talk about if it's right or not, but it's because like, the way that it is, you know, we're working and we always want as human being to work with people that we feel comfortable with. And it's not about like, we're a big family. No, your job is never your family. Never put it on top of your family. Your family always comes first. That's it. Or like yourself, even if it's just you, yourself and your mental health come first and then it's your job. But look at it as a, like a group of friends, classmates, acquaintance that are working together and you want to be with a group that you're feeling comfortable with and because of that it's how important it is to connect with them emotionally, how important it is to be honest, to listen, to connect, how to show sympathy and so because of that I very much enjoyed this book and taught me a lot and hopefully you can learn some stuff from it and you might be already a very good leader but hopefully this will teach you a little bit more. Then we have Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. This book, I read it, oh my god, six, seven years ago when I first read it. And it's a book that has sticked with me ever since. It's, if you have read any of Malcolm Gladwell books, he is such a great storyteller. He really is. He has this very unique way of writing to make all of these research and data that he had gathered seems like a very fun essay to read. And Outliers was the most fascinating one that I read because to me, it made sense in so many different ways. This book, it's talking about how it's never fully a self-made 
person that is at the top, but it's always, always, always about luck, the opportunity that they had, the first and start that they were able to have because of their, fam their family, their connection, and also the hours that they had put into it. So it's never that like one person by only the hard work that they put in got to the top. But you can put all of those hard work, but if you do not have all of those other things, you're never going to get to the top. And at the same time, if you have all of those things, but you do not put the hard work, you're not going to get to the top either. So it's like very interesting to see it. And he talks about how the magic number is 10,000 hours. And it's talking about how you can master anything if you had put that much of an hour into that field or whatever practice that it is. And it's very true because like, if you think about it, if you love something to give it that much amount of time, you're gonna master it because like the thing is like you're never going to put that much time in something that you don't like and you don't enjoy eventually you're going to just give up and so you're not gonna make it at least in that field or that part of your life but if you enjoy it and like it enough to put that much time and effort in it you're obviously going to make it but it's also very very important especially in day and age that a lot of people want to come as like oh i'm a like for example oh the best example is like a whole while ago that um kylie jenner was like oh she's a self-made uh, 30 under 30 or something like millionaire billionaire and i'm like but she's not self-made do you know how much money just money alone her family has given to her for her to start sure she might have had a good idea sure she might have put the hours in it but she had all of that money and also all the connection and she was already famous you know from a very 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 young age everybody knew that family so you cannot say that she was self-made because she had all of those things that led to her become billionaire and have that much money and success you know and so that's a reason that it's very important to realize that sometimes it's not really you you're still putting the hours it's just that some people had a first head start and it takes you longer to catch up with them and because of that you should not really try to criticize yourself and like question yourself or wonder that like why a friend of yours is doing more at the same age as you are and again it's not good to compare because we are all on our different journeys we have to go through different ways and path to reach to the same goal sometimes and so because of that I very much enjoyed this book it was very fascinating to me to read and really see that how sometimes in a very weird way some stuff that are way out of our control can play a huge role into our success or our failure and so I highly recommend to give this book a go because it's just it's really good it's very fascinating to see how all of these things plays in our failure and success and it's again it's not to discourage us to work hard or just like give up and be like well my family it's not rich and I don't have all the connection so I'm going to fail but it's really about like no how about like yes you have to recognize that you're going to start a little bit behind the line but it doesn't mean that you cannot push and try to have those things that maybe maybe like you will reach it 10 years later but you still can do it you know so because of that highly recommend give it a read then we have gut by julia enders this book is a fun one um this book is about our gut the most underrated organ our body these days a lot of us do know that our gut is not only there to digest food but it's really can affect our immune system our hair our skin and in overall our well-being and so because of that it's very important to know more about it and this book is just the most fun way to learn about that I'm not really a science person like when it comes to biology in general I'm just get very queasy and just nausea and I just don't like it it's just a me thing and so because of that I always even when I was in high school had a, like a very hard time to sit through my biology class and like pay attention and really learn but this one is so fun and like it has all of these like very cute funny doodling illustrations like I mean look at this 
like this is our like bacterias cleaning our guts isn't it that fun and so it's such a fascinating way to learn about our gut and our gut health and really realize how important it is to pay attention to it and how sometimes if we're having issues with our skin with our hair it's not always sometimes the skin itself but it's the stuff that we're eating you know and especially because um, at least for me, where I live in America, there's a lot of like processed food, the hormones that it's in them, a lot of like chemicals and things that goes through our food that are just unhealthy and not good. And so because of that, it's very important to see that how much we have to pay more and closer attention to what we eat. Sometimes you're tired and you're not in a mood to cook. And that's understandable. I do that too. But it's also important to realize that how often do you do that, you know, to have more plans to like, I don't know, cook ahead of time, sign up for some of like these subscription boxes to send you vegetables. Sometimes the thing that I do is that like I generally either hide those things like I do like I have a little like a little cabinet that I put a lot of like my snacks and stuff and I'm one of those people that if it's not in front of me I will forget that is just like I will completely forget that I even have those and so sometimes I will go back and I'm like oh I have like this chips or whatever and so like for sometimes I do that sometimes I just refuse to buy anything and then just like you know buy vegetables and good foods so I can eat healthier for at least a good amount of time and so this book really focused on that and it's breaking down all of these elements and parts of the gut and how important they are and how they work to really explain to you so you understand because like you know sometimes at least for me it's very not okay that someone is like oh this is the right way to do it so go and do it without really explaining to me why how that it's a better way and like why it's going to be more helpful but like this book since it explained it to me and without really telling me that like go eat vegetables and you will be fine it was like here's your gut look at all of these organisms that it's inside it look how they work look what they need look how they function look what is going to damage them and based on all of those information that I got from it, I was like, oh, now it makes sense. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to drink better. And even like, you know, you pay attention and like you realize that, oh, I'm feeling like a little bit weird, you know, and like you start to think like what I've been eating the past week, have I been exercising? And so this book, it's one of those that again, it's fun to read. And that's not always the case when it comes to like body <laughs> Look at this. It's just like, I love it. It's very fun. And it's it, that's the reason that I love it because I even gave this book to my sister to read it. And like, she's actually the science one. She's the one that has studied all of these things. And that's the reason I love it because like, I always trust my sister. So I'm like, read this, is it good? And she was like, yes. It's actually, you know, all based on actual science. And so I hope that it will help you to, you know, get a little bit more familiar with your gut and how it's like, you know, sometimes have those gut feelings and it's telling you to do something or not to do something. And like, you know, not just that, but also like your skin, your health, to just be happier and healthier. And that's actually a great segue to the next book, which is The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie Jacku. Now this book, oh my God, I listened to the audiobook and cried so much but crying out of joy but also sadness so let's just elaborate this book is about eddie our friend who has lived through holocaust he has he he's a jew who was in germany he was born and raised in germany and he always believed that he was german first and then jew second because how much he loved his country but then all of those horrible, horrible stuff start to happen and he was captured and he went through all of the just horror of Holocaust. He lost family members, friends, loved ones. He himself was tortured and because of that, like nobody believed that he will survive. By the time that finally Hitler died and everything collapsed and all of that, um, by the time that he was freed, they really gave him like just few months, maybe 
year or two max to be able to survive because how bad physically and mentally he the stage that he was in but then he proved them all wrong and he actually lived to be 100 at least the book was written by the time that he turned 100 and through this book he's really talking about survival the importance of friendship and love and how to be happy despite all of the darkness that is in this world and one part that i very much love and i'm kind of paraphrasing here but it was talking about how your kindness can really save a person sometimes you know they can be going through the worst day or month of their life and you being kind to them just smiling trying to help them reaching to them can really save them and I just love that because it's so true, you know, we as human beings, we don't know what anybody else is going through and it's really important and I do understand that sometimes it could be very hard because we might be the person also that is going through a hard time, but it's important to remember to be kind as much as we can, to really just try to find that light in that dark dark tunnel to be that light for sometimes like we cannot find it and we should be the light ourselves and so i love that book it just touched my heart so much especially as a person that like i am too young to have like experienced everything that happened during holocaust obviously and since i'm not jew or any of my family members are we never experienced it firsthand but to listen and read the story of a person that went through it that lost so many people and yet by the time that he was freed he still tried to forgive his country he still tried to forgive those people to start a life anew to find love to create a new family and to find new friends and that's just beautiful you know that really shows that survival skill that sometimes not everyone can have and we should all try to have because it's really hard to come from that you know how can you forgive a country that did that to you you know that much horror it's not a, and it's not only about you but it's all the people that died around you your family members your loved ones and still to try to forgive it that's very very big you know and so it's one of those books that i love to read it because it shows that how happiness depends on a lot of things obviously if they tell you money does not buy you happiness that's a lie, you need the money, you know we need to survive. But it's also very important to realize that money, it's not everything, you know? That friendship, those relationships, the love, the kindness, all of these things are very important, sometimes even more important. And so it's a good reminder to really sometimes also see that maybe your worst day, it's not as bad as you might think. It doesn't mean that it's not a bad day. It absolutely is. And your feelings, everything is valued. And it's you have the right to feel like you're having a bad day. But sometimes when you look at it in perspective, it starts to give you that little bit of a light to be like, you know, it could have been much, much worse. So maybe, you know, I can like be sad a little bit less. And so I enjoyed it very much. It was a very moving book. And especially because like I love that Eddie every time that he was talking, he called me and everyone that was reading the book, my friend, you know? And that's like such an adorable little connection there, you know? You do not feel you're reading a book, but you're feeling like you're having a conversation with a person, you know, that are sitting in front of you and you're just listening to them telling you, you their stories and everything that they have experienced and how they have managed to still stay just happy, hopeful, have a smiling person and so i very much enjoyed it i found it very fascinating very touching and it's one of those books that it's really just needed to be read you know it's one of those books that i cannot say like it's fun and interesting to read it is interesting to read but it's not fun really but it's one of those books that I very so much believe that you should read it once in your lifetime because of the way that it's written, because of the story that it's telling, because of the lesson that it's really teaching. It's so important to have that. 
And so hopefully you will give it a go and you will enjoy it as much as I did. That being said, that was the list for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us all know if there is any nonfiction books that you have read, enjoyed, learned a lot from that we should all give it a go. And until the next video, happy reading.